You know, a lot of people call themselves, uh, when you ask them what do they believe, they'll say, you know, I'm spiritual, but not religious. Um, would you comment on that phrase as you perceive it? And the second part of the question is, how do you think the established churches should respond to this? Actually, I think uh, many uh, teachers in all the traditions uh, are uh, facing this challenge and wondering what the answer is to. It's a very pervasive phenomenon. But I, I think it suggests that, that uh, for one thing, that people really are interested in the major questions of life and are not being fed through the culture and now not by their religious persuasion uh, to deal with uh, the basic questions of, of life. So they can only be suppressed by withdrawing from them or, or filling oneself with other projects uh, which are always bountiful such as those that are the object of the three first energy centers security projects means looking for wealth, uh, affection, esteem means looking for fame and prestige, and of course power control is, is looking how big a part of the world you can take over and how many people you can employ, and et cetera, et cetera. So these are very absorbing and they appeal to the false self system and its needs or demands. Uh, these can become overwhelming necessities for some people if they don't moderate them. So, so and uh, that leaves the spiritual element of people completely unfed through any kind of regular institutional inspirations that they used to have. And even if, if the religions had, uh, because of their human element, a significant number of faults, in, including uh, a, a lack of, of commitment to their own uh, preaching. In any case, um, it, it, uh, the interest in spirituality is, is probably very good, uh, and it's probably a movement of the spirit, adjusting to people where they are and uh, awakening in them uh, some response to uh, human values and, uh, in the deepest sense of, of the word, and, uh, and perhaps uh, guiding those who were, who were thoroughly committed to some kind of solutions. I think that one of their characteristics, these good people who are interested in spirituality, not religion, is they don't want to be told what to do. They're not congenial with authority, usually in any form, coming from anywhere. And, and that's why teaching is going through a somewhat of a revolutionary stage where the participant participatory education or classes are more popular than lectures. If you have, we have a lecture, all the kids will, will text during, keep themselves occupied, so they don't know what you're saying anyway. So it, it's part of the vast cultural shift of, uh, that technology has, has brought into the spectrum. It could be a movement of the spirit. And I think that there needs to be a distinction between people interested in spirituality as such and people interested in contemplative spirituality or some other word that expresses perhaps transformative might be required where contemplation is still uh, doesn't have the specifically transformative meaning that, that we give it in our teaching and that uh, is being used more and more of late. If we're talking about spirituality in the sense of contemplative spirituality, this is, is, is a very positive development. This 
spirituality tends to emphasize experience and specifically the experience of of dedicated service and meditative practices and and practices to reduce the influence of the ego and false self. They're pretty well represented in all the traditions, the same ones, so they're human. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is this a movement of humanity or evolutionary development that is indicating the coming of an axial period similar to the coming of rational consciousness into the emotional world of four or five thousand years ago that was worked out in the Greek philosophy and their uh, teaching about the various gods and goddesses and their activities. So I don't know where it's going. I just think it's a, it, it's a, some answer to the needs of people who really want to face the great questions of life, but for one reason or another don't identify with the religions. For one thing, many people now don't get any religious education because the parents don't know what to teach them. And, uh, and also the religion is, is, is not in a very... Uh, impressive mode at the moment because the, of the religious wars, which uh, turns off noble-minded people who really would like to see war reduced. So the first thing the religions really have to do is, is not convert more people to this uh, perplexity, <laughs> but to uh, pr promote communion between the religions that would gradually provide the respect and understanding and even love that is required to avoid the temptation of over-defensiveness, criticism, and violence. Right now, there are all kinds of religiously motivated wars going on. It's very, it's, it's the worst possible <laughs> PR mm -hmm. to interest anyone in religion, I would think. And then among themselves, they're having plenty of controversy, and in some cases come to violence. So, so religion itself has become a problem. But uh, so people, uh, you know, going back to nature or thinking of <laughs> a better place to spend their time in the mountains or the seashore, and maybe it is certainly uh, it better than getting into uh, needless controversies and so on. But uh, along with the other economic crisis and the uh, corruption of politicians that seem to be generalized in all the democracies, it's a very dismal scene sociologically for a young person who's open to uh, spiritual growth. So when they say they're interested in spirituality, they're also saying they're not interested in those other situations. They'd like to do something about it or to transcend it in some way. So what can the religions do about this? Uh, I think they would have to give a strong witness of nonviolence of understanding, acceptance, appreciation, and friendship to other religions, even though they have personal dislikes of some things they do. What is being understood, in other words, is not necessarily the particular practice which we might find offensive or inadequate. but because of our religious persuasion, but the, uh, uh, but the fact that we believe now, the following Vatican II, that the Spirit is working in them also. And that means that the Word of God is, is manifesting itself in them without the words that we're familiar with and is perhaps guiding them and is the source of grace for them. Uh, 
even if we didn't believe that, the fact that the incarnation took place means that, that Christ is in relationship to every human being. Hence, everybody is religious just by becoming one. And it is, a, is in relationship. You don't have to get it. You are in relationship to the source or creator. So, so in other words, we already are most of the things we want to be. But it's unconscious to us what that state is like because we, we don't have a standard when we were born of what true happiness is. And our reason doesn't function enough to criticize what we're doing or other people or belief systems. But given the human condition, I think religion is meant to be start people on the spiritual journey and to bring them so far and to su support them in the future. And uh, I don't see that something else can quite replace that because uh, our other attractions for great humanism or generosity and service or art or science can, can easily fall under the influence of the ego, of course, religion does too in some respects, but it, at, at least it gives people some foundation to build on rather than a completely uh, or infinite number of possibilities they might want to choose from. In the spirituality network, which seems to be growing, there's literature now where you can study 12 different traditions with tapes and books and so on. To see, if you want to be religion, you can figure out what they all do so you can then go with the one you feel attracted to. So that's pretty advanced uh, way of proceeding. So that's what the, the movement is offering of the plate. What religions should do, above all, is to recover their contemplative dimension and to present it in ways that is accessible to different kinds of people, including the poor, the middle class, and the well-to-do, uh, so that everybody has some opportunity to consider the great truths of, of philosophy and faith that have been uh, developed in the world, while not overly depending on them as the last word and being willing to move into more intuitive and direct practices for a personal relationship with God that, that uh, seems to be the purpose of religion is individually and corporately, but individually with the assistance of the community without which its individuality is somewhat suspect, uh, is, is, uh, needs to be uh, nourished and, and over a long time. And there have to be examples of more dedication that people can imitate if they want to. Uh, my answer would be, if that's what your question or the questioner is, you, you got to get people to meditate <laughs> with a meditation that leads or cultivates silence on a daily basis if you're going to offset the endless propaganda of worldly motivation and opportunities for uh, shallow gratifications that don't speak to the deeper needs of humanity but which are multiplied almost infinitely in the present diversity of cultures and opportunities. Mm -hmm.